how to build a personality brand as a Christian. And for some people, they will cringe when they think about the word personality brand. And the reason why is because what we attach definitions to words will sometimes also hinder us from really getting into a place of true purpose and freedom in Christ because we have been bounded to definitions behind words. I get it. Personality branding is something that Christians try to stray away from or, you know, maybe a handful of us. Me, I see the power of personality branding for us to be identified as light and salt. That's really it. So today, as I talk about this, I want to really open up, break some bondages, renew some minds because we're like, well, it's all about Jesus. It's all about Jesus. That's what people say. It's all about Jesus. It is all about him, but you are the vessel. You are the instrument. And Jesus preached on the Sermon on the Mount. He says, you are the salt of this earth and the light of this world. A city that is set up on a hill cannot be hidden. So light, what they do is we we are called to be sent out in a place that is dark. Everywhere is dark if Jesus is not in it because he is the light. And we are the light as well because he has labeled us as light. Now, fame is not bad. Jesus was famous, and of course he has to be famous. The whole thing, you know, make Jesus famous, that whole hashtag movement, make Jesus famous. Solomon was famous. Go read 1 Kings chapter 3 and chapter 4. His fame spread around the nations around him because of the Proverbs that he was uh, uh, writing and what people heard about Solomon, and they came. You could talk about uh, Queen Sheba. Even Abraham was famous, and he was the one, the father of faith. It says that he will, God will make him famous and will bless nations through him. Fame, when it does not bless other people, is poison. Fame that does not bless other people is destruction. It leads to self-glorification. So I just want to renew our minds. I want to come out here when it comes to building personality brands. Now that I've laid that foundation, there's so much I could talk about. I have a Fruitful Friday newsletter. You guys can tap into that. I talk a lot about these things, these gifts, skills, and how to be effective in the marketplace. Now, now that I renewed your mind, and if you're still kind of iffy about it, you can go study the literally the scriptures that I shared. It's very, very uh, obvious that it's okay to have fame, but to a level of degree, to an extent, to, to God's calling, because just like Solomon, we can't be chasing the things of this world. It's vanity. He had all the wine, the women, the wisdom, the wealth, and he wrote the book of Ecclesiastes at the end of this, and he says, out of everything that I've shared, the fact of the matter is, fear God and keep his commandments. And that's what we're doing. Everybody's assigned, appointed, anointed for such different positions. Now that I put this on the line, how do I build a Christian personality brand? Because again, we're all called to have a level of influence, a sphere of influence. In in the book of Corinthians, it's 2 Corinthians chapter 10. Read the whole um, chapter so you can get the context. There is a sphere of influence that we have as his disciples, as believers, that have influences in specific spheres and realms and environments and places. Your sphere of influence could be your dinner table. Your sphere of influence could be you operating as a manager at, you could say, your local retail store, or you could have a sphere of influence around the people around you where God has placed you, whether it's school, in the workforce, places that you go to every day. We all have a sphere of influence. Older older cousin to your younger cousins and siblings, you have an influence towards them. There's levels of influence that we all carry. You might be a credit expert. You could be a person that's in real estate. You could be in the retail industry. You could be in the fast food industry. You could be asking people, do you want fries with that? I know I'm passionate about this stuff, but we all have a level and sphere of influence. And in the same uh, scripture in chapter 10, 2 Corinthians chapter 10, it tells us that if we compare ourselves among ourselves within ourselves, then we are not wise. So I can't even compare my calling to anyone else's calling. You can't compare your calling to my calling. We're all different, family. Cool. Now that I share that, there's something that I want to really share about this. There are too many echoes and not enough voices in the wilderness. What we do and what people end up doing is they don't know what to talk about. They seek the spirit that is lingering around social media, not the Holy Spirit. It's the social media spirit, not the Holy Spirit. It's the spirit of Pharaoh. It's the spirit of mammon, okay? But they never seek the Holy Spirit in what they're supposed to speak because in those times of when we're supposed to speak, the Holy Spirit gives us utterance and remembrance of the things that we're supposed to speak. There are way too many echoes, and I call these people parrots, that have regurgitated one minute revelations on social media and have made it their own thinking that that comes from the spirit of God. And there is wisdom and maturity in knowing when to release a word that you have received. Receiving is one. 
Releasing it five years later is a level of maturity because God had me release it, but he allows us to receive it in seasons prior. Are y'all tracking with me? There's too many parrots. There's too many echoes that have regurgitated information and sayings. And I'm not perfect either myself, but I have to take this revelation, take it into prayer, take it before the Lord to say, God, give me the strength and wisdom and the guidance and the understanding and increase to be able to release this as you want me to release this, all right? This is so good, family. I want voices from the wilderness to rise up. And I believe in order to build an authentic personality brand as a follower of Christ, as a believer, is to be able to stay close with Jesus, get planted in his word, continue to allow the Holy Spirit, be yielded to the Holy Spirit, but also to make sure that I am not an echo in drowning with a whole bunch of people copying each other. I'm in the business realm. I see a lot of people saying, here's the steps on how to do it. I'm all about systems and steps, but to do it to the very T, to become an echo of the person that you are being mentored by, loses authenticity to become a voice. Even if it doesn't get you the results in X amount of time, I'd rather you build off vulnerability and authenticity than you having to build from a place of I'm just a copycat. You can't copy anointing. You could try to copy the recipe, but I promise you it ain't gonna taste the same. You just can't copy it. And I believe the ver emerging voices and people that are coming and rising up, I'm not talking about the false prophets that are building sandcastles, right? Matthew 7 will know them by their fruits and those that hear these sayings but doesn't do Jesus' sayings, they build their house on the sand. Discern people building sandcastles versus building it on the strong, firm foundation of Jesus Christ. I'm talking about people that are dripping with oil because they have spent time with God in the secret place and they come out and that those things that Jesus or that God sees in private they will be rewarded public, openly. I'm talking about fresh voices coming from the wilderness. Voices coming from the wilderness, not copycats or parrots that are just echoing and regurgitating a one-minute sermon that they saw on social media while scrolling saying, oh my gosh, thus says the Lord. That wasn't the Lord saying it to you to be able to release. That was probably a personal revelation to you. But because it went viral, because it had numbers, and I'm a marketer. I know these things. I know when something hits. I have a whole page on like news and stuff that hits because we just know. But I'm talking about being authentic and vulnerable with the message that you share. This is how to build a long lasting personality brand that will be light to this world and salt to this earth. We're called to be salt because salt stops things from decaying and anything that doesn't have the light of Christ or Jesus in it is part of the kingdom of darkness. And we're called to be salt on this earth to stop things from decaying out there the kingdom needs your voice, but the kingdom doesn't need another copycat. How to build a personality brand, be authentic, be vulnerable to Jesus, and just be real. Be who God created you to be because in a, in a sea swarming with people that have been mislabeled and they carry those mislabels in a form of trauma, bondage, brokenness, insecurities, offense, we're called to be set free in Jesus' name. Isaiah 61, Luke 4, 18, the spirit of the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings to the poor, to heal the brokenhearted, to let the oppressed be set free. I'm talking about this from a kingdom perspective, to let those that are bound to be set free in the mighty name of Jesus. Build a brand authentic to who God created you for, on purpose, for purpose, and he has ordained you since the, since the beginning. He already knew and he formed you while you were in your mom's womb. Like That's the type, and it's, it's going back to that. So I pray that you guys aren't just sowing it to people that are telling you how to do it like this or that, that. There needs to be some Holy Spirit, some rema and revelation behind the intention on how you move. Check your heart, family. If you guys wanna know more, I got newsletters. I got a lot of different things down below that you guys can check out. I got free trainings. If you guys are going more into the, the content creation space and you wanna learn more about that or just running, running businesses, I got so much on that. But I, I just thought I'd come up here because there's just too much trash out there. I'll be real, like too much people labeling themselves as like kingdom coaches or kingdom uh, entrepreneurs and kingdom content creators. And it's like, there's no biblical backing behind it. There's no authenticity. It's a bunch of copycats. And with everybody with a mic, everyone with a podcast, everyone with a platform, the barrier of entry to get onto social media, it's crazy with all the false things that are going out there. Pray for these people and pray for also yourself. You gotta love you. I mean, what is the greatest commandment? They ask Jesus to love thy Lord God with all thy heart, all thy might, all thy strength, all thy soul. And then it says the second of these commandments is to love thy neighbor as you love yourself. Do you love yourself? And do you love who God created you to be, right?
loving myself is honoring God's commandments because I got to love thy neighbor as I love myself. But also above all, as long as I love like Lord God with everything I got, he starts to reveal who he originally created to you. You are the personality brand. You are the best personality brand. Actually, Jesus is, but there's no other personality brand you can imitate or copy because you can't copy the anointing on somebody else's life. If you guys like stuff like this, praise the Lord. Let me know below. You guys ended, uh, got here to the end of the video. Type personality brand in the comments, personal brand in the comments. And again, resources down below. If you guys want to be part of my email list, you guys like reading newsletters, I do a Fruitful Friday every week. I love uh, dropping those. It just helps with the body of Christ. What do you? What else are things that you guys can uh, offer to say, hey, these are the best ways to build a personality brand as a kingdom entrepreneur, as a kingdom content creator, or just as a Christian in general? Because even if you don't have a business or you don't do content, you are still a personality brand. In Jesus' name, But be, may the blood of Jesus be upon you. Bye-bye. Take care.